Melissa Ross. Well, recently, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force unveiled new recommendations for prostate cancer screenings. Previously, guidelines called for annual PSA screenings on all men starting at age 50. Dr. Scott Ackerman is a radiation oncologist for First Coast Oncology in Fernandina Beach. He joins us now to discuss the new guidelines. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Scott. And so, Dr. Ackerman, what do the new guidelines tell us? Well, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force uh, came up with new guidelines that are just that are their guidelines. There are other guidelines that the American Cancer Society has and that the American Neurological Association has. Uh, but um, what the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force is saying that over a certain age, uh, men shouldn't get uh, 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 screening at all and that men should consider uh, not, not being screened I in general. And uh, there's some problems with that, with, with not doing screening. And so there's concern in the community that to de-emphasize PSA screening is going to uh, cost uh, uh, more lives uh, due to prostate cancer. Why do you think they came up with this, these new guidelines? Well, there's been studies uh, that have looked at populations that undergo screening and populations of men who don't undergo screening. And there's been a, a couple of European studies that have shown that uh, uh, men that have undergone prostate cancer screening and subsequent treatment for the prostate cancer actually uh, died uh, of the uh, treatment complications at a higher rate than those who did not have screening um, and, and then ultimately uh, died of prostate cancer. So for that reason, <clears throat> there's been some de-emphasis on screening. Maybe we're doing more harm than good. So you're sticking to the older guidelines? Right. <clears throat> yes, I am. Uh, because I think that uh, we need to take information and process it properly um, and, and, and then move forward with treatment appropriately uh, with that information. So the, the older guidelines and the guidelines still that the American Cancer Society has is that men over the age of 50 should have prostate cancer uh, screening. But uh, if one's life expectancy is less than 10 years, then, uh, then, then screening could be, uh, you could forego screening. And also recommend, re recommend that men have a discussion with their physician about the pros and cons of cancer screening, of prostate cancer screening, um, so that um, they understand that uh, if you're found to have an elevated PSA and, and there's an issue that you might have prostate cancer, to understand the risks associated with the diagnosis of prostate cancer and the risks and benefits associated with treatment of prostate cancer. I think that knowledge is, is power. It sounds trite, but I think knowledge is important. I think that we should know what's happening. I think that it's important for us to know uh, that we might be at higher risk for prostate cancer and that uh, we know all the risks and benefits of treatments should we decide to have treatment. It's like all other cancers, right? I mean, the earlier you detect it, the better off you are. Right, we've seen a 40% decline in prostate cancer deaths over the past 20 years. And that's not, it, it, we've had advances in treatment, but that 40% decline is not due to advances in treatment, uh, primarily. It's primarily due to advances in early diagnosis. We're diagnosing prostate cancer earlier than ever before, and men are being cured from prostate cancer. When I was in residency in the 80s, most men that I saw with prostate cancer, <coughs> excuse me, were diagnosed in an advanced stage where it had already spread to the bones. The typical scenario would be a man would come in with lower back pain and workup would show that he had cancer in his lower back and it was prostate cancer. At that stage, it's incurable. And uh, that's, that's sad. We don't see that anymore because of PSA and prostate cancer screening. We're rarely seeing men with prostate cancer that spread to the bones. But as to your, your comment, there are, we, we know that with mammography, we diagnose breast cancer much earlier than before. We have, uh, women are getting mammograms on an annual basis, and uh, we're seeing breast cancer now uh, being diagnosed in early stages where we have over a 90% chance of cure. A men and women are, are getting colonoscopy, and we, we, we know that that, and we've seen that that not only prevents colon cancer by removing precancerous polyps, but also allows us to diagnose colon cancer at an earlier stage and hence we have a lower death rate due to colon cancer because of that. So, so if, if we could clarify, what is wrong with, with testing? What is wrong with getting you know, a, a, an early checkup? Or um, do, do you think that this might lead to an uptick in cases of prostate cancer that are incurable because they won't be detected until later? Well, I'm sorry, your question is what's wrong with doing testing? So what's wrong with doing testing? Um, uh, from a, uh, a public policy standpoint is that it costs money to do testing. And so if that expense 
uh, isn't saving very many lives. We have to look at society as how, where we want to spend our money. Um, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force also recommended, uh, and they, I think they backed off from it, uh, that mammograms only be done every other year instead of every year. There was a lot of outcry from the, uh, from the community about that as well. So there's a money issue as well because mammograms and PSAs, although they're inexpensive, they still cost a lot of money when you apply it to the 300 million people we have in the United States. Um, and, and so we, we, have to, we have to balance that. But what's wrong about, from a medical standpoint, what's wrong about just doing blind testing or doing testing on uh, screening on everybody is, is moving forward blindly and not understanding all of, the, all of the options that one has for treatment. So if you decide blindly to have your PSA tested, but you're older and you're not going to get treated anyway, well, that's a waste of time and that's a waste of money to do that test. And if you get tested and you automatically go and decide, and, 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 you're, and you're automatically uh, lined up to have your prostate removed surgically, and perhaps that's over-treatment for an early stage prostate cancer. There's, there's other options. So I, so I think that what's wrong about doing screening is not the screening that's wrong. It's just it, it, it's wrong to automatically treat everybody. I think that it's good to know what you have and to, and to decide based on the diagnosis, based on the stage of the cancer, the aggressivity of the cancer, what sort of treatment to have. There's different treatments for prostate cancer. There's surgery, there's radiation treatments, there's a, a cryosurgery where you freeze the prostate. There's hormonal treatment to keep prostate cancer at bay. And many patients, we don't do any treatment. We do what's called active surveillance, where we monitor them, we follow their PSA. We may do follow-up biopsies to, to see if the cancer's gotten more aggressive over, over time. And so all those are appropriate treatments, and the proper discussion to have is with your physician to discuss all those options for treatment and understand that there's lots of options for treatment before you just blindly screen everybody. Okay, so if I'm a listener out there wondering, okay, in what circumstance should I then talk to my doctor about it and, and ask for a test, what, what would you tell them? For a prostate cancer test or screening test in general? Screening test in general. So for cancer screening, which is really what I'm most knowledgeable about, I think that, that, that people should see their physician and talk about cancer screening. Recommendations still for men are that uh, annual PSA after the age of 50, if you're at, if you're at normal risk for prostate cancer. If you're, if you're African American, that puts you at a slightly higher risk. We recommend that African Americans have a PSA test done every year after the age of 45. If you're at extremely high risk, meaning that you have more than one relative uh, with prostate cancer, or if you're African American and have a relative with prostate cancer, we recommend you, you dial that back down to the age 40. So on those years, you have to have a PSA test done annually. And then at some point in your life, when there is less than a 10-year life expectancy, you probably can forego prostate cancer screening at that point. So that's, what, that's, the, that's, that's my recommendation. And you have a, a, a discussion with your physician about that and about all of your, your uh, options and the ramifications of screening. Also for, for men and for women regarding colon cancer, uh, 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 colonoscopy at age 50, and if that's uh, negative, then every 10 years after that, if that shows some equivocal findings, you may want to do it more regularly, and that discussion should be had with your gastroenterologist. Um, for women, in, ad in addition to the colon cancer that goes for men and women, we recommend uh, uh, mammography annually after the age of 40. If you have a a family history of breast cancer or high risk, you should have a discussion with your physician about having it maybe earlier than 40 and perhaps having a baseline of 35. And for cervical cancer screening, uh, a pap smear um, every, every uh, other year uh, once you're at, uh, uh, over the age of, of 20. Um, other than that, the other, there are no other cancer screenings that we do regularly. We do some skin cancer screenings, but not on an annual basis. If you have a family history of melanoma, uh, you should uh, be sure that you see your, your primary care physician or a dermatologist to have appropriate uh, uh, check of your body. And certainly be aware of your own body and yourself. If something is abnormal, see your physician, have it uh, evaluated. Okay, great advice. Thank you, Dr. Scott Ackerman, for being here in our studio. Appreciate it. Thank you, Scott. And you're listening to First Coast Connect here on 89.9 WJCT. And uh, Dr. Joe Furman is a board-certified family physician, but he's also a world